everyone, and today I'm going to be covering um, some little tidbits about the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. Um, with the holiday season, a lot of people got a lot of new uh, coloring supplies, and they had some questions about them, uh, particularly uh, how to color a leaf um, in Johanna Bassford's World of Flowers. So I'm going to start with talking a little bit about the pencils that I would normally use to potentially color a leaf. I use some that are, you know, straight up green, but I also like to use some of the ones that are more in the teal family. So for this video, you can see I've got a very well-loved pencil here. I don't use him too often now because I don't have any extras of him, but for the purpose of this video, uh, we'll go ahead. This is a dark sap green number 739. This is a cobalt green 182. This one is a dark English green number 729. This one is a moss green 225. This one is a barrel green number 214. This one is spring green 470. This one is olive yellow, 015. This one is a grass green, 220. This one is a malachite green, 180. And let's see. Oh, looks like I grabbed two of the same one, cobalt green. Okay, so that one's cobalt also. And since this one is so teeny tiny, we're going to go ahead and put it in the little pencil extender here. Uh, the other thing that I also use occasionally is the Caran d'Ache blender pencil, which I like quite a bit. The only thing is, is that, is that because it's of the way that it's made, it doesn't have a wood casing. If you are holding it like this and you press down too hard, these are prone to kind of breakage in the middle. I have a lot of smaller pieces, so maybe don't press quite as hard if you want to make the longer barrel last last a while. Um, the other thing that I use with these to sharpen them, I have an electric pencil sharpener, but because these are, well, the price that they are, I don't necessarily want a electric pencil sharpener to eat up more of the pencil uh, than I'd like. So I like to use the Stadler sharpener. It's got two, two holes on it here, one smaller, one larger. I use the larger one. I know technically you're supposed to turn the sharpener, but I just, I can't get used to that. So I turn the pencil, but it gives it a nice, uh, a nice sharp point. Um, okay. So these are all of the colors that I would generally choose. As far as color combinations go of how you could put these together with, um, with a leaf, you can kind of choose the colors that are in the same family. So these, this is obviously, uh, a warmer, a warmer green. It's got kind of a yellow tint to it. Um, same thing with this one. This one's kind of, I like to pair this one with the grass green because it's more of a lime green and a grass green. Um, these two go well together. All of the ones in the teal family kind of go together. Uh, so that's generally kind of how I separate them. This one here is, it's the 739. It's the darkest out of all of them. And you can see because I use it a lot, you can use it as a base for pretty much any of these. Um, so let's, for our color combination today for the leaf, Let's do, so you can mix and match too. You don't necessarily have to stick, you know, you could put a teal with, you know, a green or something. In fact, let's do that just for the fun of it. Let's do these three together today. Because, I mean, although you're coloring, unless you want to, you know, you're trying to copy a plant exactly how it looks, there's nothing that says that it has to be, you know, exactly like, you know, a leaf in, in real life looks. You're coloring, you're using your imagination. You can let it go however you want. So, so this one is the Malachite Green, the 180. Let's 
So we're just going to do a little sample swatch here so you can see. A thing I like to use sometimes is if I need to, just a brush. Sometimes if you use your hand and you smear it away, it smears the little color pencil dust and then you get unwanted streaks. You can see I kind of started heavier and then went lighter with that other color. Now I have the 225, the moss green. And I'm going to kind of start where it was heavier a little bit. I'm going to push heavier, not, not a lot. And then I'm going to take it out lightly, like so. And then lastly, I'm going to take the, which one is this? This is the olive yellow, the 015. And I'll start right about here. Do a little bit heavier and then on your way out. So you see you can have these. They're pretty well blended. Now, if they're not as blended as you like, then you can take your blender pencil. Start at the back. Basically what this does is it spreads the pigment around. Uh, it, it moves it a little bit. It tries to fill in um, kind of the tooth on the paper. If you wanted to... Um, blend it a little bit more. There is one thing that you can do. Now this is just the normal white. I go through a lot of these because this is actually what I like to do. So you can take the white. Now keep in mind it will lighten your colors. So they won't be as vibrant. And you can see that the white is kind of blending it all together. Now you have a much lighter color. You know, well, that's not as bright as I want. What this does is it kind of, like I said, it blends it all together into one sort of layer. And then you can go back over again. And you can see it's much more smooth this time around. And then even still, you come back in with this and move things around a little bit more. And you kind of come up with something a bit more smooth. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and set this aside. And we'll jump right into the World of Flowers page. We're going to do this leaf right here. gonna do is make sure we've got a nice sharp point here and we're gonna start with this leaf here let's see let's cast a bit of a shadow here that's better I'm gonna start in the corners a little bit heavier and then as I go out I'm going to lighten up a little bit I don't always necessarily fall, follow where the shadow falls, but what I like to do, a good rule of thumb, is follow the contour of the leaf itself. Be a little heavier on the outside and lighter as you go in.
realized I was a little bit bright, so I fixed that a little bit. But you can see how I've gotten darker, faded out lighter. A lot of times the trick to learning new pencils is learning how to layer them. on to the 225, the moss green. This is kind of how we did it on the little example one. We're going to start kind of in towards the color a little bit and then work our way out. trying to choose what colors I want for a leaf. My general rule of thumb, or, or not just a leaf, just a anything I'm coloring really, I, I have what's called my rule of three, where I choose a dark, a mid, like a mid color, and a light color. And I feel like having that many color choices really helps to bring it to life, to give it the depth that it needs so it's not just a flat image anymore. Not pushing real hard. Just doing kind of light layers. Just keep in mind we have one more color to add after this. You can see kind of how it is. Apologize for the light glare here. Another thing you can do if you want to avoid streaks is color in little circles instead of lots of heavy lines. I went a little bit 
heavier than I would have liked, so I'm going to lighten the edges just a little bit. The trick to having good blending is not having harsh edges or lines. And then, lastly, we're going to take the olive yellow. kind of color on the places that we already colored and we're just going to lightly fill in the extra white space here not pressing too hard Okay, so if you liked the way this looked, you could stop now. But for me, I want to go over it a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to our darker color here. This is the Malachite Green, the 180. going to give it another layer. Adding multiple layers really helps to bring out the vibrancy. with the moss green, the blender pencil this time around just to kind of show how you blend the pencils themselves and then lastly we have the 015 olive yellow this lighter color I kind of color over the entirety of the leaf it. 
And you can kind of see that even though I chose kind of a more blue color on the edge, but the other added colors of the green um, and the other, you know, the mid color and the light color, it, uh, it still looks like a pretty green leaf. But I'd like to think that you can give your images more of a fantastic uh, look with more out-of-the-box colors, more uh, colors you wouldn't necessarily find in nature. Anyway, I hope this helped, and I will see you guys around next time. <laughs>